Rob Doster here. I got Jeff Goodman with me. Hell no. John Fate. Are we still live? Build the 68 till I die. Get I'm sorry, man. I'm blacked out. Randolph children. DJ Khaled, you know the big DJ Khaled guy? Hands brought up and in. Goodman needs to be fired all the time. Josh Tasker. You're going to beat people straight up. You know the deal. They have no swag. They have no nothing. Terrell McNeil. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid majors. This is Field of 68. After that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, speak, you idiot! Welcome to the Field of Six After Field of Sixty Eight After Dark. God, you can't even speak. I can't. I'm so excited. Hold on, hold on. Before we get started, let me just. It's like you've never done this. UConn is your 2024 national champions. John Henson, Randolph Childress, Jeff Goodman. I'm going to be the guy that's unbearable hey, to be Dagan, around tonight. Can you tilt the camera so Rob is out of the shot, please? <laughs> you just Photoshop him out. Right. Photoshop Whatever you got to do, out. do it. Because this dude, honestly, who wants to take the first punch? <laughs> who wants the first punch? Are you going to hang out with the UConn Rotary Club after this or what? Is My God. what yeah, buddy. UConn won the national championship 75-60. to 60. It's the sixth national champion for the UConn Huskies. Tristan Newton. Final four, most outstanding player, Randolph Childress. You nailed the uh, the game plan that UConn was going to run. John Henson, we won all of our bets. Yeah. And Jeff Goodman <laughs> is going to have to sit here next to me listen. and listen to it for the next hour. Jeff, how you feeling? I'm good. Act like you've been there before. Child. That's what I say. Act like you've been there before. I don't want to. All right. All right. <laughs> Tell listen, a year ago, huh? I was my right here God, a year ago, buddy. God. No, no, listen, th this team has been unbelievable. Uh, they capped it off pretty much the way they started this thing uh, this season and last season, the NCAA tournament, with a destruction of Purdue in the second half. You know, first half, it was close, and I thought maybe, maybe Purdue could come out of the gate in, in the second half and put some pressure on them, maybe take the lead, make some threes, but when you make, what, one three? All game, one three from Braden Smith. Is that all they made? I mean, you're you're not winning too many games in in 2024 making one three. Well, he didn't get any help in his backcourt mates. That's for sure. Yeah. But to yeah. know you didn't. I, I didn't oh, he was. He's, he's nah. still MIA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but listen, credit credit UConn. This is it was the most dominant run. This two year run is the most dominant run we we've ever seen in the sport. It's just the only way to say it. Yeah, I mean, they won every game by at least 13 points. Every game in the NCAA tournament for, for 12 straight games. Like, that's that's ridiculous to think of. And, like, Danny Hurley, just think about, like, what this dude has done. Two years ago, again, he's worried about losing his job legitimately after losing New Mexico State in the first round of the tournament. And he flips this thing, and then he loses arguably his three best players from a year ago. And adds a freshman in Steph Castle and a transfer in Cam Spencer, and they're right back there dominating. So uh, maybe he does have the formula. Maybe he really does have it. Like, I laughed at him when he first said that before the start of the season when I went up to stores. I laughed at him. But maybe well, he's got it. I'll, I'll tell you this. With Cam Spencer graduating and Tristan Newton graduating and Steph Castle and Dominic Klinger probably heading to the NBA, we're looking at a situation where if he finds a way to make this be like a top five team again next year, yeah, he does have. Caravan's probably going too. You think he? Is? There's going to be a, there's going to be a lot yeah, to rebuild here. Six, eight. Yeah, no, like maybe it's in a week week draft. I mean, yeah. you got to think like from a perspective of a player, like you want two. Caravan's got two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got two rings. I mean, this is peak. If he's not gonna wherever he's gonna go this year, is he's not going higher? All right. Let's we'll, we'll we'll get to the legacy talk here. We'll get to the how how good this team is historically talk in a little bit. I want to talk about what actually happened in the game because Randolph, you absolutely nailed the game plan that UConn was going to go with. They basically said you can try to beat us with twos. They let the ball go into Edie in the post and they played one on one against them. No digs, no uh, no double teams, no nothing. Just let them go one on one against Klingon. Um, when there were ball screens, they did not leave any shooters. There was no tagging. There was no rotation. They just played two-on-two, -two, and they said that we're going to be good enough to be able to beat you guys two-on-two -two or one-on-one -on, -one on enough possessions where you're not going to be able to score enough to beat us. What do you think of what they did and how they played, RC? It was, it was just death by a thousand cuts. It was just, hey, we're going to stay home on you guys. 
We're going to choke your wings out, your guards, get physical, get over screens, contest when we can. Cling and don't foul. If Zach, he's going to get his touch. If he goes for 30 or 40, so what? We're going to hold everybody up now. That's what they did. They couldn't get the three going. They couldn't get the attempts. Uh, they tried to force a couple of those were blocked. Um, you were concerned early because the first five minutes when Zach Eaton was dominating, you felt like yeah. Purdue was up. And you look up and they're still down. And I thought, this, this doesn't look good. When they were down by six and a half, I thought they were, this could happen. And came out the second half and it was over. You kinda, I kind of likened it to like in a game in the NFL where like, you have to just take short passes and drive down the field. I, I think Purdue got bored, right? Lawyer, they choked out the guards. And it was two-man game, downhill, make a decision. Ray Smith, lay it, take the shot. You gotta find Edie. Like you're gonna, you're gonna have to do this every possession. And, and um, I don't think they had the mental kind of. I don't, I don't think Brady Smith had that mindset. Like, no, oh, I'm gonna have to be a slow, boring. I'm gonna have to make a play every possession when I throw it to Edie. And um, you kind of just walked them down. I mean, that that's what they did. And uh, when they were up six and a half, I, I was kind of like, I think Brady made that shot up six. Even off the tunnel, when I watched them, I, I didn't like the energy Purdue had. You know, it, it just seemed like they. Well, you know what part of it was? Yeah. Like, lawyer couldn't get going. Yeah. Right? He gives know. them their energy. Yeah. He didn't, didn't like make that. any. He couldn't do anything. It looked like a, a boy playing with men. Well, out there. yeah, and and I want to. I don't. I don't think that this was Fletcher Lawyer not showing up. No, he I was think, overwhelmed. Yeah, I think what this was was UConn saying, uh, "We're not going to let them get going. We're going to just. We're going to. We're going we're gonna to dare Purdue to try to beat us by giving the ball to Edie and let him try to score sixty. Jones and Lawyer, I, I, they just were not existing. Well, Jones got mm -hmm. when he got in foul, foul trouble, trouble too. Was, that killed was, him. It was over. Right, right. They put Heidi yeah. and Colvin didn't make shots. He had, a, he had one big three mm -hmm. attempt and he missed it. And he wasn't ready. Yeah, just wasn't yeah, ready. Man. Just, he didn't, he didn't honestly, know he was going to play today. It, it was one of those game plans where again you you look at it and you're like, okay, I get it. Edie's our guy. We're going to keep beating it to him, but. Ultimately, you're not winning a game against UConn that way. You know, you need to make threes in order to beat the UConn Huskies. And they were a team that, frankly, I mean, think about it. They shot 40% from three this year. They were second in the country in three-point percentage. And to come out there and just keep going to Edie, keep going to the well, and just saying, like, we're going to keep getting to – eventually he was going to he was gonna miss some. He fatigued. Right. He fatigued a little bit. And it's tough to – I mean, the shots he made, are, it's not like he was getting left. I mean, he, he made a couple good moves. But tough twos. I think the air ball from Edie showed you how tired he was. How tired he was. And yeah. just – when they – the tough twos weren't going to work with this UConn team. And, and I think Purdue – even when they were down 13, 14 points, you got to speed up the game, start firing like – they didn't do it until too late. That's, yeah. And that's part of the that's part of why the game plan that UConn employed was so smart. Yeah. Because what, what what we said pregame was if UConn can get out and run and maybe get Edie tired by having him go up and down the floor, that's one way to kind of get him off the court. What they did instead was say, okay, you're going to have to run. They're going to run the offense for you on every single. You don't get his possession off. You are going to have to go run out there, set a ball screen, roll to the rim every single possession. You're going to go out there and fight Donovan Klinger for position every single possession, and that is what ended up wearing them out because it, it's – we talked about this on Saturday night, Randolph. It takes energy. It takes a lot of energy to be the focal point of an offense for 40 minutes of the game for every single possession. And tonight I think he just – he got a little tired. You started seeing some of those jump hooks coming up a little bit short. And at the end of the day, it's it's not the most efficient brand of basket. There's a reason why the NBA has gone away from all those post sessions. It's not the most efficient way that you can play, and you come bet on that and won. thought they did a hell of a job early on. It, it was just evident the other guys couldn't get going, and we talk about it all the time. The key for Purdue, this isn't rocket science. That's what they do. They throw it in the ED, and they need two of those three guards to play well. Mm -hmm. When Jones gets in foul trouble, lawyer was non-existent all game long. He couldn't get attempts. And, and Smith, I thought, was okay early. I thought he could have been a little bit more aggressive. He seems to be trying to facilitate a little bit more. I thought he needed to be a little bit more assertive offensively, and he settled a little bit. Um, he needed to go in up six. Yeah, yeah, they needed to be up. Even of the first two minutes of the game, you were like, man, right. it looks like 
Purdue yeah, was controlling gonna a, this game. It's going to be a heavyweight match. And they were down. And, you know, I mean, they weren't, they were never up. And it was just like, wow. Like this, this, it feels like Purdue is having the, the wild plays. They were making all the right plays and they still were losing the game. And it's just, you just knew it was, it was inevitable that a, a big thing, would take over. A big thing was, talked about it all year long right all tournament long to beat UConn you got to blow up their actions offensively you got to take away what they do you can't let them run their stuff at Purdue John they just could not do that yeah and we talked about UConn's ability to adapt right like any style any style of play Cam Spitz comes and kind of seals the game Tristan obviously played really well today Castle was on Smith 75 feet 6'6", six, six, NBA prospect, athletic. Brandon Smith just wore down. I mean, it is, it is what it is. And um, Klingon held us on down there. Uh, I was actually impressed with Edie today. It kind of made me be more, a little more bullish on his NBA prospect because I felt like Klingon, who's going to be a top pick, you know, he he, he he worked him a little bit. I was impressed. Well, I was impressed. In, fair, in fairness to him, though, I think that was just part of the plan. It's yeah. just like, hey, we knew Klingon was never going back. In attempts because he's not the focal point of UConn's offense, and so the game plan was like it's almost like an NBA game plan. Like, hey, you you get your numbers, mm -hmm. we're gonna let you get your forty, but the rest of you guys we're clamping up on, and that's what they did. And so I thought Klingon did a great job of not fouling. He got in some foul trouble in the second half, but I thought they was well in control of the game by then. So staying out of foul trouble early because he nearly played the entire first half, yes. and allowed them to come out the second half and pull away. Samson Johnson, can we talk about him for a oh, second? Man. Because he he came in. I think he played – you got the, the box score here. I think he played five minutes. He had five fouls. He had a couple offensive rebounds. He had two highlight reel alley-oop dunks. It was – Both from Newton. Both and, and the yeah. scary part is if he could have played more because he rolled hard and fast to the basket for the mobs, I mean – he was they able to get, yeah, he was just, able to get behind yeah. Edie, and I also thought I saw the R was big. Yeah. I thought he was huge. Yeah, he like came in buckets. early and hit a couple yeah, threes. He, really he had seven it. quick points in like four minutes of the game, and like the, it was like, all right, the bench is going now. So when you add that in top of the three guards as they already start, it was just like, all right, this this guard play is just dominating this game, and it, it was just going to overwhelm Purdue. Yeah, that's Castle was, and and Castle was huge. Like early second half, he had one tip. That was huge. Yep. He was just so much Jeff, bigger, I, stronger. I thought he was the Final Four MVP if yes, I had my vote. I, I thought his uh, defensively and, and and what he's done in both of these yep. games, yep. Uh, I won't argue that Tristan Newton gets it, but if I had a vote, it would have been Stephon. He, I, I would have I would have voted for so many, He made so many small. His IQ he, is ridiculous, bouncy, man. Bouncy, those, those extra boards, those extra possession, just being so much more athletic than the man that's in front of him. Him sitting down on Braden Smith, not getting fouls, not reaching, being disciplined. Guess Alabama saves saves him essentially, yes. right? Yes. And, and so, I mean, he, 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 he goes about to make Top a little five. Money. Top five. Little money. Yeah. Sure. yeah. The, the defense. Winning player. Yes. The, the defense yes. that he played on on Braden Smith and Mark Sears. So basically, what he played thirty four minutes tonight. Um, yeah, thirty four yeah, minutes man. tonight. He played thirty four minutes on on Saturday night. Yeah. Where he spent the entire time ball hawking the point guard, guarding for seventy five feet. And oh, by the way, he also averaged eighteen points, and and was the guy getting offensive rebounds, and was the guy getting these tip ins, and was the guy all. coming in when when people weren't guarding him, and able to, to to make a play. I, I thought let, I'm with hey, you. I thought he was a team good. like San Antonio or one of these teams that could use like a rangy guard. Man, he's gonna be good. He comes in day one ready to play because he defends. He knows how to play. Yep. His jump shot will improve. He doesn't force anything. He doesn't either. force anything. Talk, talk about his jumper right now. I, I think he's he can be a better shooter. I think he will be a better shooter. I think you know it's it, he just does he impacts the game in so many different ways. He's such a versatile player. Uh, like I said, I, I I understand him giving it to the veteran guy, but I thought the freshman was the most valuable and, player, and the most important player this final four. In the new NBA, they got a saying, "Let it fly." You would love it. You know what I'm saying? Let it fly. So yeah. I think he's gonna be fine shooting the ball. I mean, he'll he'll be fine. He'll be he's just a worker. Yeah. Yes, like that's the one thing. He yeah. is a worker, yeah. so he's gonna get okay. better. Listen, we have a lot more to talk about here from State Farm Stadium here in Glendale, Arizona. UConn won their sixth national championship. We'll be joined by John Fanta here at some point. And then we're gonna be right down what this season meant for Purdue.
The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines for making all of our picks and predictions, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money to get it. This is what you have to do to make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using that bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. You'll get up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your bet loses. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly... We have some fun stuff coming up for the rest of the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops odds boost, and the thing that I love the most, a nice little parlay boost, as well as a ridiculous array of prop bets for anything that you could possibly imagine betting on. From odds on getting to the Final Four to National Championship futures, I'm calling it right now. Bet MGM is the king of the prop bet. So go download the Bet MGM app. Use that code FIELD and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod in any podcast app. Like and share the YouTube videos that you enjoy. Tell your friends about us. It all helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. Welcome back to the Field of 68 After Dark. We are live from State Farm Stadium here in Glendale, Arizona. After UConn cuts down the nets in their second straight national championship and their sixth national championship of the last 25 years, which is crazy. Impressive. Crazy when you think about it. Um, before, we're going to get to an interview here with Donovan Klinger in a second. But I'll, I'll, before we do, I do want to put Purdue season into perspective. Guys. And, and Henson, I'll start with you on this because I think – I think that what they did was an unmitigated success. Like, I don't think that you can criticize them. I know that people are going to say, like, they didn't win the championship. Zach Eadie never won a championship, all this. Like, winning winning national titles is not an easy thing to do. They made it to the national title game. They got to the stage that they wanted to be on. They proved what they are. And I think that I was – I just – I can't say enough good things about this Purdue team and this Purdue program. Yeah. The weight of the world is on their shoulders this year. That's tough. Um I, for one, wasn't the biggest Purdue fan getting to the national championship, so that was impressive for me. Um, they just came up against a juggernaut, but, I mean, they did what they needed to do. They redeemed themselves, and, um, I mean, that, that program's in good hands, man. It, it's, it's, that's a basketball school, uh, so you know, I think they'll be fine. No, listen, I mean, again, what Painter's done here, and not with his back against the wall, but certainly a lot of people questioning him after last year. As embarrassing a loss as we're going to have. And he's come out and took it, all the shots, put it out there, put it on him. And tonight it just, listen, they were beaten by a better team. Ultimately, they were beaten. Everybody has been beaten by a better team. They would have had to play when you actually see it out there. They And I was kind of hoping for a really good game, which is probably why I picked Purdue. Um, they would have had to play their A game. And you kind of wouldn't have had to play their C game. Let's call it for what it is. Had this Purdue team come back and had an early first round exit, what's the difference in from a local perspective uh, or national perspective of Cal and sure. Matt Painter? No, people are saying like because he people can't were going to win in the tournament. People were going to question Absolutely. whether he could win again if, he had, if they had another first round exit. So for this team to come back shows you the toughness that they were to come back and respond from that moment, not not shy away from it, own it, embrace it. More importantly, attack it. Uh, credit to Matt Painter and that staff and those players, you know. But but really for Matt, and I said that before, I thought this style for him to make it this far is amazing. And and you can't discredit that. And you got to be really, really happy for him. But he would have caught a lot of flack with a two-time back-to-back national player of the year and had an early round exit. He was loyal, right, to his team. He got one transfer. Yep. Right? Tom Izzo was loyal. Didn't really work for Izzo. It worked for Painter. He kept this team together, and it paid off because they got, again, within one win, one win of, of, of getting the national title. He, he He's put himself certainly in the Hall of Fame now as well because without a Final Four, probably not a Hall of Fame coach. Now you got that Final Four, you got that national title appearance, and, and he does it the right way. 
He does. He's just a great guy. You yep. cheer for him. Yep. Yep. You just I cheer mean, for the him. The difference tonight, guys. Cheer for him. I, I want to talk about this for a minute. The difference tonight in the coaching styles, watching these guys. Matt Painter is sitting on the stool most of the game. Doesn't say a word, word to the referees. Said of the other he hasn't picked up a technical in 10 years. Danny Hurley doesn't shut the hell up to the refs. I have never seen a coach, like, like literally, I think hey, he, you coach. He, he works the refs too. Like, oh I'm like in the first half, it's insane. The first half, he worked the refs into a couple calls that you know physical when they got a little physical yeah. down there. So, hey, it was part of the game. Uh, the, I, the more the more I watch him, the more I believe that all of that the, the reaction, all of those histrionics. I think all of very very calculated. calculated. Yes, yeah. I think it, there's there's no no gamesmanship. I don't think on. he's out of control when he's doing a lot of it. I think. There's times where he does get out of control. Oh, he's annoying. But Maybe I think, not out of control. But I think that it, it's very – What he's doing all of that stuff intentionally. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, again, if I was a ref, I would have teed him up in the first five minutes. I would have. Uh, real quick. Can we No? Push? Am I crazy? Man, really? I'm crazy? Championship, man. It's, 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 all right. I would have done it earlier in the season. I would have run his ass earlier well, in the season. Well, here's, here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. Because uh, this is actually something an interesting conversation to have because – what? He doesn't what? do. Anything. Does he, he get? Does he get handled differently? Am I, am I crazy? Uh, I mean, he, he doesn't. He he makes sure that he he makes sure that he stays above board with how he. I mean, you know, he, he does what he does, but I don't think it's out of the realm. I don't think it's technical worthy. Well, the, the problem is he set up the the baseline for himself so yes. high yes. that yes. like exactly. you can give him a T on every single call that goes against you, kind of. If you there there are other coaches that would get technical fouls because their reaction is not expected. Correct. When you expect him to fight you on every single call, are you going to team up two times? Like, it's it's never a call when he does it. I mean, yes. seriously. But he's, but it's let's, let's, he's in a different category now. But even last year. It was no, no, no. Right but now. he's a national champion now. Yes. No, yeah, I so I'm saying, I once, he, once you get that, I think there's a level of respect and cachet that you deserve that, that the referee he's decides. An coach. I'm and not now he's that. at a, he's at a right. level where you can get away with even he, more. He can get away even more. Okay. All right, I want to. I want to ask. He's you guys, earned it. Let's put. Let's put a bow on Zach Eady's career. Two-time National Player of the Year. He just had thirty-seven to ten in the national championship game in a loss. Henson, when you look back at Zach Eady's career in ten years, what are we going to say about him? I, I, I mean, it's going to kind of be like I, we're going to remember this run and remember how he was as a player. Um, he he dominated at his position and his time and stayed at the school he was at and. and I respect it, and, and it's good to see. I, I love seeing players because, you know, we talk about all the women have the household names with college basketball. Zach Eady is a household name in America, and so uh, I, I love that for him and hope it does well professionally. Um, it's time for him to get paid. I'm pretty confident I'll go to my grave with him being the last dominant big to dominate the game in this manner, yeah. like this, offensively with those type of numbers. I don't think another the guy last one. the last one in a long time, in my lifetime. I don't know. You might be a grizzled dude. I, 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 I think it's I, – yeah, I, I, I hope I'm not there. I hope I'm not here that long. But I think it's I, – I don't think it will happen in the next 20, 25 years. I really don't. I think he's – because the game has changed. No one what, – what elite program plays like this with a big guy? That, that's the focal point of their offense. That everything runs through him. Only this, is a unique, this is a Only unique style and, and that, this, that so many analytic coaches, they just go away from this. Like this This is what I said to Matt, about Matt Payne and Purdue. Not many teams and players play like this. Credit to him and his stamina, his size. But here's here's the thing. So they had players that were this big that were very, very good before. Isaac Haas, for example. He was, wasn't this guy. But right? What I'm saying is he was not the same level as Zach Eaton. We will see other players like Isaac Haas. I don't think we're ever going to see someone that can do all of the stuff that Zach Eady could do and be as dominant as Zach Eady was. It's just I don't think it's going to happen because I think he's a generational kind of a talent. I, I've been doing this for about 15 years, right? I'm thinking in like the last two decades, the, the three best players, the three most accomplished, the three greatest college basketball players have been Hansborough, Jalen Brunson, and then Zach Eaton. You can put Hansborough and Brunson whatever order you want. Careers, you mean? Careers, yeah. I think that that, that Hansborough probably had the better – Brunson career because of the win. I don't know if yeah, he, was, he, was, he won two titles. He got he two was, titles. He got two titles. He got two titles. National Player of the Year as a senior, which he yes. was the reason why Villanova was as good as they were. I wouldn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah, no, he's up there. Those three guys, you can't argue any of those three guys. I was worried about the Celtics report. 
Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you, Rob. Those three guys are so deserving of it, and and and. No, no, no. Just yeah. Jeff Goodman. Jeff Goodman is nice. Jeff Goodman is ruining our show by talking about uh, Robbie Hummel again. Yeah. You guys are gonna be shocked. Jeff Goodman's talking about Robbie Hummel. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Jeff Goodman? Jeff, he, he, he did a good he job of making sure he wasn't crying. Though. He, he, he had a reason to cry tonight because that was um, the guy that the guy that uh, is weird as it gave him seven points. Played a very good in my mind defensive game was Donovan Klingon. Played his role. I was able to catch up with Donovan Klingon after the game on the floor. Let's get to that interview. The field of sixty eight. Donovan Klingon, back to back national champion. How's it feel? Feels great. Um, you know, there's no better feeling in the world. It doesn't feel real. You know, I, I, you dream of this. Everyone dreams of this. So just to be able to come out here and do something so special at a historic school means a lot to me. Well, when you made the commitment here, it wasn't back at this level. What does it mean, a kid from Connecticut, a kid from Bristol, to help bring UConn back to this pedestal? It means a lot. You know, it's a historic program that, you know, does a lot of special things, you know. And, you know, they were in a little bit of a downfall. Coach Shirley came here, started lifting it up. And, you know, when... When I got there and the rest of the guys that got there my year, you know, we just came in with a different mindset and just wanted to dominate. Game plan tonight was basically to allow you to go one-on-one -on -one with the two-time national player of the year. What does it mean and what does that show that you did? You know, I, he got 37, respect to him, man. I mean, he's a great player. He he scored at will and, you know, but the game plan was for him to go score 70 and, you know, don't let the other guys score. So how, how do you think you did? I think I did all right. You know, I mean, he had 70, but, you know, I, mean, I had a couple cheap fouls that, you know, that, Made me a little mad, um, but then, you know, could have done better, but, you know, we won. What would you do with the ripped undershirt? Is that going to be uh, a memento? I gave it to someone. I don't know where it is. Make sure your dad gets a hold of that one. I got to keep that. Six, how's it feel? Nothing better, man. I got two of them now, and, you know, the school's got six. It's nothing better. Congrats, man. Go celebrate. Guys, here's the, the thing that I think is the most impressive part about all of this, and, and maybe the reason why I don't think we're ever going to see – something like this happening, a back-to-back -back national championship in this dominant fashion again. You, there's no the, – the roster continuity just doesn't happen the way it did 17 years ago with Billy Donovan, right? He was able to bring back, what was it, four first-round picks, four NBA three, players. Three, 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 three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, everyone came back. This UConn team lost the three guys. They lost Andre Jackson, Thomas Sonogo, and Jordan Hawkins, and they were still able to come back and be this dominant. Is this something that can – is this replicable? Can other programs – can anyone else do this? It's hard to imagine. I mean, it's hard to imagine with the roster turnover, with NIL, with social media, that this happening again. I mean, like, they brought back – again, it's – Kristen Newton wasn't even supposed to be this good. Like, they didn't think he was this good when they got him in last year from East Carolina. Alex Caravan was like, got peace, right? I mean, when they brought him in, he redshirted his refreshment. Out of Southboro, Massachusetts, he was a piece. And Donovan Klingon, he was he, hurt. They he brought was, him in. They reclassified in the middle of a semester and joined the yeah, team in, in December, yeah. January. Uh, and, and Klingon, we didn't know he was healthy. Like, it, it's amazing what they were able to do. And, and yeah, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to see it with the current construction of, of college basketball. I don't know how, how you're going to be able to do it. It's, it's, it's hard to do. If those guys had returned to school and been on the roster, it's still yeah. hard. That's how hard it is. Yeah. Let alone new guys. If the same guys came back, it's still hard. Like a lot of teams in the past tried to run it back with mm -hmm. the same group and didn't happen. So credit to these guys, man. I tried to run it back and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Start, poor guy got injured. Tyshawn it's Taylor, the slightest thing. Tyshawn happens. Taylor carved us up in the lead eight. We had Stillman White guard to get. Stillman White. I mean, right. it, it, we lost seven, but. It wasn't that close. And so it's a risk, and, and it's hard to do just by injury. But I will say this. When you're in college, man, you're living with guys. You're with guys so much. That roster was probably together before the oh. season even started so much that it's a lot easier than professional teams do. And, and it's your, those are your brothers. I'm still close with all my teammates and managers because that's how much time we spent together. So it's possible to happen again, but um, – You could see they really yeah. – one for another. sure. You could see it. I mean, and again, like Tristan dude, doesn't say a whole lot. Good dude. Right. Like, even in the draft, when all they got drafted, I was at I was at the draft party. Like the whole team was there supporting those guys, man. So that, that was that was something that was big. Yeah, the the that, that they've done very, very well is the, the culture that's it's yes. such a ball word yes. and it's so cliche. But Husky cultures, 
I mean, it works. <laughs> that is why. When we come back, we're going to talk about Jim Calhoun versus Dan Hurley, six national championships. Whether you are a world-class athlete or a podcaster like myself, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper recovery for top-notch performance. After a six-month season loaded with cross-country travel and late nights, I can promise you that proper recovery is a priority for me these days. That is why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of The Field of 68. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers that's powered by the Energy Enhancement System, or the EE System. If you haven't heard of the EE System yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in New Jersey or at hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Are you interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Well, all you got to do is go to unifiedhealing.com slash field to learn more and find a center near you. You can find that link in the description below. That's unified, U-N-I-F-Y-D, healing.com slash field. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before you undertake a new healthcare regimen, including the EE system. Well, welcome back to the Field of 68 After Dark. We are live from State Farm Stadium here in Glendale, Arizona. Rob Doster, Jeff Goodman, Randolph Childress, and Spaz Napier are here. And we are breaking down UConn State National Championship. That's right, man. It's all good. I just want to have a gin and tonic in my hand in 30 minutes. So this guy, you wrap this <laughs> you're, a gin, you're a gin and tonic guy? Yeah, I'm, I'm gin and whatever. Hey, hey man. Hey, hey. Yeah, man. We, we, listen, we didn't talk about that. You hey, you, you and Kevin Ollie, a big part of this, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, someone called me Shabazz today, six ten. <laughs> they did not. They yes, at the, at the sports book. They got to get a little like. Better feel. That's first. why we don't respond to people online, because people think the six ten guys are Shabazz Napier. He's got to think of. Maybe he was drinking a little bit. It's possible. Been. Probably some of that Hus Brewery. Uh, That's, uh, that could be. Could be that. But that's. Let's put some of the stuff into context. Let's, let's put some of the, this this win into context. Six national championships. What does it say about this UConn? Program? Why does this keep happening? 25 years. UConn? Well, they, they've had great coaches. Yeah, they've had two of the best uh, you're going to find. I mean, Jim Calhoun, what he did to build this program in stores, Connecticut. You know, again, for those people who haven't been there, it, it's incredible. I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and – both of these coaches are very similar, right? They're incredibly demanding. They're old school. They're going to stick to their values, but they're going to be able to connect with the players because they're going to be able to put their arm around their players afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I always heard this about Calhoun, right? Like, players hated him at the time, and then when they left, they realized, like, what he did for them and how he prepared them, not just for the NBA, for Ray Allen and Rip Hamilton and those guys, but for life. And Hurley's similar, right? He's not letting you take shortcuts. You're going to play hard. You're going to play the right way. You're going to be disciplined on and off the similar court. Similar to Coach Cal. Uh, similar to Coach Cal. Coach Cal's got the same. Cal, who's the same? You said Cal, Cal Perry. Cal Perry, too. Um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but I've really? got a lot of Kentucky guys. I think these guys are more straight shooters. Yeah, just saying. Cal, I think Cal Perry's more full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Publicly. I'm just saying I think he's more of a car salesman. These guys aren't. Like Hurley and Calhoun are like, they give it to you straight. Do they not? They do. They this like, has got like $1.4 billion in NBA contracts. Well, no, no. I'm, he he prepares his players. That's, that's what you're saying. After they're done, yeah. Yeah. guys think of They don't like him. It's, it's different. I, I agree with you on that. It's different. Yeah. He, 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 he's... He gives you that, but that's part of what happens with his guys too. He's coached his guys hard, and yeah. and and they 
they, they thank him for it later. He doesn't let them show. The success winning is hard, man. And I even – when you add this to I'll, I'll here say we this. Go. Kevin, here we go. Kevin, I Kevin, don't Kevin, have a call. No, no, no. I Kevin, don't, let, because, I don't no, have a call. Kevin, because I'm adding Kevin, Ali deserves to be in that same conversation. Regardless of how they feel, the guy won a national championship at UConn, and everybody wants to be dismissive toward what that accomplishment is. You're counting the six. Then you add damn Kevin Ollie's name to that six, yeah, regardless took, of how you feel took about the program it. Well, down, but yes, be, be, because year, what he learned, this, the, some of the I'll say that some of the stuff that he got in trouble for is BS. That some of these other coaches that that we had just applauded, oh, I don't care. About he learned he it from for. Him. Listen, that part of it is well, that's separate. part of the takedown. No, no, that's separate. He, he didn't work hard enough recruiting wise, and the program did. We can attest to it. I, I, I would disagree when with Dan that. Dan Hurley took well, over also, the program. He didn't have a lot of talent. And also, Kevin Ollie also happened to be the coach when they went to the AAC, which is a very different thing yeah. to being in the Big East. But I don't want to get – we love Kevin Ollie. No, no, no. I just he's said up, he's part of the six. That's yes. all. No, he I is. I forgot about 100% Kevin right. Um, Let's not put him in the same class yeah. as Jim Calhoun That's, or Dan Hurley. No, I just said he's part of their six. That's he's got one. I want, let me ask you guys this, okay? We had we had this argument. Randolph, we were talking about this on Friday night. Goodman, you were you were whining about this over here because of a tweet from one Terrence Oglesby where he said this was the best team that I've seen watching college basketball. Now, look, I don't think T.O.? T.O. said that. T.O. was asleep. T.O. said that. <laughs> T.O. No, so T.O. Right. tired. We need to call him. He's tired. He's tired. Something he's tonight. tired. I don't know. Yeah, he said to watch a lot of Hornets games. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame him. I think why, why he's that horrible reaction? basketball. Why that reaction? That they're the best that he's seen. Yeah. They're not one of the best. I, I mean, I, 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 uh, I, I don't even know how, like. Yeah, he's lumping, yeah. he's lumping them in together. He's taking last I'm thinking year's like back to back. I'm thinking team like the Florida the, games. The team. I'm thinking about the Duke back to back teams. I'm, I'm thinking about these teams like best. He's ever seen. I talked to Grant Hill after the game about what did he say? I but I know what he yeah, said. I don't want to say. What I he won't said, say what he said, but, but I talked to him. I talked to him, and yeah. I noticed what he said. You know what and, what I, and I'm not. And, and, and on, I, 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 I'm, am I wrong? Listen. Grant Hill, Christian Maitner, Bobby Hurley, Thomas Hill. They would have ran him out of the building. They would have, but again, I think we all know that would have happened. But this is the best, right. the most dominant In we've this seen. Era. This isn't the best yeah. team, but this is the best, most dominant. Era or dominant performance we've seen in a two year run. It's just, you, that's you, what it is. A lot of talent, but it ain't the best talent. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of talent is taking. You got the ignite. You got kids going to Australia. You know, it, it's just a lot of. But it's also, is, but it's also. How long did Grand Hill stay in college? Three, four years. Four, yeah. four. Stay four. Yeah. How long did Christian Leitner stay in college? Four. four years. What year was Joe Kim Noah when he when he went to the NBA? Three. Junior. Right. Yeah. Al Holford yeah. too. All those guys were older. Yeah. Right. And I understand that this UConn team is older, but we're also not talking about lottery picks for the older guys, right? Like, it just, I don't think that you it's can impressive. compare. But it's the way you build a roster now, yeah, Ross. But I, but I agree, right? Yeah, yeah. You impressive. can't compare the teams across arrows yeah. like this, no. right? Because it's, it's a it's different unfair. structure. But I would say that when you compare the, the last two UConn teams, right, to the rest of college basketball, I think the gap between them – and the field is as big as any gap that we've seen. It's the blueprint for how you win today. It's it's the the mixture of experience, particularly at key positions with the freshmen. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have figured it out. And they're also doing it with dominant picks. That's what's so impressive. They're not just relying on one way. They, they got it's it's an elite guard play, elite wings, and elite big. It's just it's impressive, and it's something that. A lot of teams may try to emulate, but they're very particular about who they bring into their program, and that's why they're back-to-back -back national and, champions. And as soon as something that was super, as soon as Edie went to the bench, what did they do? Huh? Clean right Clean. away. Right away. Quick right order had to bring it back. Like yeah, yeah, they're like, good. Yeah, yeah. Not sitting down. Like, not in. Quick lay, like it's like an NBA coach. Hundred percent. Right. I mean, that's what. Yeah. He said yeah. one thing that's different. He said that he. That UConn does that a lot of coaches don't do is he's like they'll run it over and over. So when once they identify a weakness, they're going to continue to yeah. attack it that way. And he's like, so many colleges are just like they're so busy running all of their stuff. He's I, like in the NBA, if it and, once and, it's not working, he's like, that's, that's, and that's find what the black up and attack it. And yeah. that's what I was saying throughout the season. If you look at their offense, it's it's a pro style offense, and 
They're going to come at you from the same way until you stop it. Boom. Stop it. We're going to do like, and so that's tough to do, like, even with Purdue. And you're right. in the game, you're up two. Why are you going away from it? Attack down, go Braden Smith, make the play. One of the things I must say about this run, and particularly with this year, that we got to acknowledge, this was another I, I, four three-point shooting performance mm -hmm. for another dominant win. They were six or twenty-two, six or twenty-two from out of three-point line today, and another fifteen-point win in a national championship game against a team that everyone would acknowledge was the second best team in the country. Yeah, there was there was a point early in the second half, right? As UConn was starting to pull away, they, they got it to nine, they got it to eleven. Purdue gets it back to six. They push it back up to nine again, where UConn had like four straight possessions where they got a wide open look at a three. I think one of them was Tristan, one of them was Cam coming off the screen, one of them was in transition. Tanner Bam missed one in the corner. One of them was Sand Dr off of a kick out from somebody got offensive rebound, and they they didn't they couldn't hit one, and it felt like that was the where we were waiting for the avalanche to come. And the shots didn't go down. And if that had happened, then I think that, I mean, they won by 15, but I think this could have gotten really ugly if those open threes ended up going down. So, to your point, like that's, it's wild when you think about that. They didn't have that, that flood. They didn't have that, that bum rushing that, that we were waiting for. I don't even know what you say about that because it's the one weakness that this team has, and you still can't stop them. They're just dominant without elite shooting. And sometimes it's not even very good. Six for twenty-two gets a lot of teams beat. If Alabama so, six twenty-two, they lose. So I, I want I want both of you to answer this. Why? Why are they this dominant despite not doing the thing that every modern basketball team wants to do? They I, they, they they put they they put pressure on you offensively. They get in the lane. They spread you out. Cam Spence is good at getting downhill. Lot they can they they can lob you. That guards are good enough to finish. Oh, by the way, Caravan's floating around there. Tristan Newton might hit a random three to really break your back. Like, they 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 put pressure on you in all phases. And, and if you can't shoot the ball, it doesn't matter. They're getting, they're getting in the lane. They're the most versatile team in college basketball that attacks you at every level, it's, whether it's threes, whether it's at the rim, whether it's mid-range. They're not so analytical that they don't take mid-range shots or pull-up shots or floaters. They do that. They attack you at all three levels. They're elite at all three levels. And when one isn't working, they rely on the others. And their personnel understands who they are. That's a big part of it. There yes. Was a, there was a play today that I thought it was so smart. Ken Smith drives baseline. He switches on him. He made the shot, but he shot the three like I got board coverage. I mean, he shot not three. He shot the baseline shot like he looks at you. Oh, oh, oh uh, he's on me. He's down there. He shoots it. He makes it. But like plays like that, not plays that college kids are making. I know he's my who are that. Oh, he's like, right, I got board coverage. Like, that's just little stuff like that. I watch them. I mean, that's the smarter champions. I think they have five high IQ players yes, on the court. Yes, 100%. Like, how often does that happen? Where you have five dudes that know how to play the 100%. game the right way and just kind of make the, the right decision. Like, that's hard to do these days. Sure. Yeah, you mentioned it was a coaching. Yeah, you mentioned Hon, you mentioned Cam Spencer. We were, Jeff was able to catch up with him after the game on the floor. Let's hear from Cam Spencer. All right, Cam, how does it feel? You were the new guy on this team. You came here, well-traveled. What is it like to win the national title? It's an unbelievable feeling. I mean, uh, you know, to finally complete the task that we set forth at the beginning of the year, uh, to do it with, you know, this group of guys, the teammates and coaches that I have, man, I'm just so thankful for all of them and, and the opportunity. Your run was so dominant. I mean, again, you were tested a little bit today. Purdue was a close game of the half. What allowed you guys to pull away in the second half? I think we just did a better job defensively. You know, I think offensively, you know, we got some good looks at the beginning, a lot of those lobs to kind of get us going and get the momentum. Um, and I thought, you know, Zach Eady is a hell of a player. They're a great team. You know, credit to Purdue. They had a hell of a season. And you know, I think it was just a lot of will to, will to get stopped in the second half. Dan Hurley said, you're the perfect guy for him. Why? Why are you guys, like, ideal for one another? He's the perfect coach, man. I mean, you know, he lets me be me and, and have a little bit of an edge, you know, the same way that he is. But, you know, he, he's the best coach and puts us in position to be successful every day. And, you know, he brings it every day, every practice, every film session. So, you know, when somebody does that for you, you owe it to them to, to give it your all. And, you know, I'm just so thankful for Coach Hurley. 
What's the parade going to be like? You looking forward to it? You thinking about it yet or not yet? My first parade, so, you know, from, from what I've heard, it'll be, it'll be a blast. So, you know, I look forward to it. Congrats, my man. Welcome back to the Field of 68 After Dark. Off, off air, we were just talking about Steph Castle. You were making a point about him. I, I want you to, if you could share that. I, I just was saying how he, he's such a well-rounded his IQ and the plays that he was making. I mean, just the post-ups, the off tip-ins. He doesn't play like a typical freshman. He plays like a guy. If you would have watched him play, there's no way in hell you could say this kid was in high school a year ago. And he, he he's never sped up. You can't speed him up. He knows who he is. He impacts the game. I, I think he's – he may be the best two-way player in college basketball from a wing. I think his on-ball defense, his versatility defensively is it's just unmatched. And he finds different ways to hurt you. And I thought in the final four game, like that was the game plan was let him beat him. And he did. And he comes out tonight and plays equally as well. There's a level of selflessness there. Right? There's a level of unselfishness where unselfishness. Unselfishness where you don't see that from a five-star like a lot of five-star freshmen are like i'm coming in i'm getting my shot be guy. i'm trying to be the guy I'm trying to come out an average 20 i want to be the top five pick i want to do all of these different things and there's none of that with him he's like all right i'll do whatever you need me to do to win and you know what happened as he won he saw his stock go from being like is he first rounder to maybe he's top five we're gonna be joined by john Fanta coming up next John. By now, you guys have surely heard about Autograph, an app founded by Tom Brady with the intention of disrupting the way that fans consume content covering their favorite teams. This is how the app works. All of the podcasters, bloggers, and digital creators covering a team have their content sent to that team's page in the Autograph app. Instead of having to bounce from site to site or trying to navigate the safer workspaces on Twitter, you can just scroll through Autograph. This isn't a hard sell. This is the truth. I am a UConn fan, and I use the Autograph app to keep up with the writers I read and the pods that I listen to about UConn basketball. The best part is that every piece of content that you consume gives you reward points. The more you get, the more chances you have at things like discounted tickets to games and the grand prize, a trip to the LA Regional and a spot in a suite for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight games. Here's the best part. We've partnered with Autograph to donate $1 to the V Foundation every time someone downloads the app using the code F68 with a minimum of $2,500 getting donated. The app is free. So download, use the code F68, help us raise a little bit of money for cancer research and give Autograph a try. I promise you it will be worth it. And while we're here, a quick reminder, make sure that you subscribe to The Daily. We have new landing pages with deep dives into each coaching change, as well as a tracker that provides scouting reports on the transfers that have entered the portal that you are going to want to know about. Hit the link below to subscribe. Welcome back to State Farm Stadium for the final segment of our wonderful week in the desert. John Fancer, Rob Doster, Jeff Goodman, Randolph Childers, fellas, it has been a blast. And I just got done with UConn's players with Dan Hurley, who did about 35, 40 minutes of media. He's not going to sleep. He's doing today. Good morning, America. CBS morning starting at 3.30 a.m. local time here. He will not go to bed. He, no that's surprise. life of a, yeah. No he can't go to bed anyway. Yeah. I mean, he shouldn't. And my takeaways of it were this: uh, he could not be happier than he is right now at UConn. He talked about finding such a piece, finding the perfect staff. His staff members said, "Unless it's a great mid major or a high major, why would we leave this?" In other words, they don't want to just take some low major job just for the sake of taking a job. They've already. They could have already done that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that in this question to spin it forward of, would he entertain the thought of Kentucky? My takeaway from the entire vibe of talking to both him and people very close to him is this. Of course, you're going to play the game because you want to get more money. But there is less than a 2% chance that this happens. Stan Hurley, in my mind, is going to absolutely stay at UConn because I think, I think Dan is wired this way. Dan is wired in a way where now he's got two. He's wired in a way where he thinks, can I get three, four, five, six? Could I become in a class of when you're talking about the greatest coaches ever? I, I promise you right now what he's thinking about is not like we just won six. 
what he's thinking about is how do I get man, I, I can get seven. Right. I can I can catch Calhoun. I I can I can catch K. Sure. Like what well, what do I have to do to be able to be thought of as the greatest ever? Can we go three in a that's how he thinks. I guarantee that that is what he's thinking about. Of course, right. he's, he's thinking not. about three in a row right now. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's. I don't think he's capable. He might call. Is he, he might call a kid in the portal tonight? Why wouldn't you? Who's the best kid right. in the portal? Right. <laughs> you right. want to call him right now? Say, yeah. hey, we're yeah. calling you after you won the national championship. Do you want to come to UConn? What would Randolph? If you had the national championship coach calling you from the game. Right. After they just won it, and you're in the portal, hard to say no. What are you thinking? And 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 Fanta, you gave him a two percent chance. I I don't think it's that high. No, I was I, 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 I don't think there's no way in hell for a program that won their sixth championship in the last twenty five years, and he just won back to back championships. This is the best program in the country. Yes. This is the best program in the country right now. I, you don't have to like it. I don't care what what school you are. Six natties in 25 years. Back-to-back you know back natties. You're what are right. we talking about? You're right. I was trying to be generous. No. Why? Screw it. He ain't going anywhere. Why? Else. He ain't going nowhere. Dan Hurley is the coach of the best program in the country. He's got it made at UConn. Why would you ever leave? You are in a you are in the perfect situation for you. That fan base is, is crazy. You are emotionally driven, guy. and I your mean, wife's not moving. Right. He's a Northeast guy. You're winning at the highest level at UConn. As long as UConn can get him, you know, he's at about 5'5 five, five right now, million a year. You know, I'm sure Kentucky can offer eight. I think UConn's going to get, you know, my guess is in the seven range. They'll come back to him tomorrow. UConn might be the first program. Yeah. With, they, they might have the first program with assistants that have two commas in their salary. They have I think two somebody, commas I think in their somebody has that. I think somebody But I don't even – Maybe I'm wrong. It, to me, I think it might come down to more it, you leverage not just for your salary, but just talking to some folks close to Hurley. It wasn't necessarily what he's making every other week. That certainly needs to be a certain figure. It's all of the other intricacies of the program, mm-hmm. the resources, the NIL. flights, NIL. having the NIL, NIL, That's NIL. That's uh, having the. I, I, I've heard horror stories covering Northeast College basketball of some of these teams and some of their arrangements with with flight. But he's sure. now, not with this one. Not with this one. That was the NCAA. <laughs> that's, that's probably always going to be a train wreck. Um, it, it's more about what the program uses in terms of all that stuff. I think they're, they're going to say, we want the best of the best. We're two-time national champions. We're getting the best of the best of everything. Catering, you name it. We're going to have it. And and on, the other thing is Gamble Pavilion. Gamble Pavilion has no suites. No, they don't. There's no luxuries to that building. None. It's a great building. The, the XL Center. If I'm if I'm Dan Hurley, I'm saying, XL Center. It's time to pony up some money and renovate your building a little bit. And it's you know, it's you know not what just else he's going to want to upgrade. That place is the weird no room. <laughs> yes, but fancy. You know, I don't. I, 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 RC RC I, just didn't. He didn't hear that. He said it's time to upgrade the weirdo room. <laughs> I, I don't know if we want to touch that. <laughs> I'm not. I, I will say this. I don't think. I think he's ahead of the curve with this, and I don't believe he's worried about a building as much as NIL and the things that he needs to retention of coach's salary, things of that nature, obviously something that involves the kids. I think the building stuff is kind of, as long as the paint didn't fall off the wall. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. I would say say that with (laughs) with Gamble, part of the charm and part of why it is the cauldron that it is, is because there's no, there's no comfort. There's no place for you to kind of go walk and get all of these really fancy, like, uh, meals. It's 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 very basic. The basic is the wrong way, but it, 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 part of why it's so good is like everyone just kind of packs in there and they're just sitting right on top. I know. And but the XL Center. I think part of it is: can we get less games there? Do we have to play at a place where you that's have to not going to change? Do you have to bus students in. It's not going to change. That part of the conversation there as well. I know it's the contract with the state. I know what it is. But, but then say to the state, make your building have. Working Wi-Fi. Yes. But that's that's coaching aside. I'm, I know what you're saying on the NIL money. I'm just saying I I am amazed at times having this program for TV throughout the season. They do not – some of those inner things, I think we're going to see them them raise the bar and operate like a Kentucky. Operate like, Because they are a blue blood. They are an absolute blue blood. But they're still, they're still a school that's in stores, Connecticut, that I think can look at themselves and say – well, how do we do some of these things to make sure that we're doing it at the level that our team deserves? That's my point. Mm-hmm. 
And I feel like some of those things could end up being enhanced as a result. Not yeah, that that impacts wins and losses. You've got to pay players. You're paying players. Yeah. Absolutely. For any program let, right let, now. I'm not denying ask, that. Let me ask you guys this, because I think that you can make an argument that this was – we talked about are they the best team ever, and I don't think that that's true. I think they're the, they're, this is the most dominant run that we've seen. Um, it is by points. 140 yes. points the of most, victories is the most of all time. The, these, these two back-to-back years I think are as impressive as anything that we've ever seen in the history of the sport. I want to know. I, I would rank this coaching job where you lose the three NBA guys and you come back and you are just there's no drop off. I would say that this is as good of a coaching job from Hurley and the staff as we've ever seen. 100. Ever. Absolutely. Like, you're going to call me a homer. And make fun of me. No, it's like, one. He's kissing Dan Hurley. No, it's, like, it, it's an incredible like, coaching. Job. No, no, it's an incredible coaching job. I just I don't know. Like there's been a lot of unbelievable coaching jobs, right? I mean, Bob Knight, when Indiana went undefeated, like that's an incredible coaching job, especially in that era, mm-hmm. right? The eras are different, we, but this is an unbelievable coaching job. I, again, I don't know if it's number one, but it's certainly up. We have a ton of coverage still in the off season. We have other shows. We're going to have more shows. We don't go away. The Field of 68 does not go away. And with two and a half minutes left, I want to make sure that we do our justice here. We do some final reflections. You go ahead first, sir on our season, this oh. network. Well, <laughs> you guys know it's been it, – it's it's probably the best time we've ever had covering it. it. It doesn't feel like a job with you guys. You guys know that. It's, it's – you look forward to this week. Uh, for some of the different reasons of celebrating. You guys are the best at what you do. You make it fun to be around. Uh, I, I think everybody – it's just gotten better and better and better. Um, and it's something that I think we – I look forward to continuing to being part of. Definitely. No, this dude. Randolph great. isn't he's entering the us. portal. Sources: Randolph Childress is not entering the. We have no. One, he's been hundred seconds. From the start. Like, day that, one. That's the, that's the unbelievable thing. Listen, we have great people yep. who work their ass off. Um, Sad to lose Chris Mack and Matt McCall, but you know what? They're coming to. They're coming yeah. to my city. Yep. Yeah. I'm are. gonna. I'm gonna give a shout out to the guys you don't. Dagan Hughes and Trevor Valise are the ones that make all of this happen. We've said, we've said it about them before, but none of this works. And some, sometimes it doesn't always work. <laughs> it works. None, of this, none of this works not always without, the work, without the work that they do and the job that they do behind the scenes. They're not sitting in front of the camera, but they deserve the credit. And I'm going to cap us off by saying this. We're on with you every day. We're on with you every night throughout the season. We have multiple shows per week. We have podcasts. We are not perfect four of us just like you're not perfect and that's okay one thing that we all have in common between our producers us Mm -hmm. everybody who follows us our amazing team of guys that we have in a chat called scrapple uh (laughs) is that we all love college basketball and we all love you you follow our work you care enough to go at us you can disagree with us this this doesn't this doesn't exist without the people that watch right people that can die hard without the people that love college basketball enough to be sitting at 1.47 a.m. on a Monday night right. watching us talk about these guys winning their sixth national championship. Take us home, Fanna. Folks, we love covering this sport. We love all of you. And nobody has been better this season than the team that did it tonight. Congratulations to the Connecticut Huskies. For Dagan Hughes, for Trevor Release, for Randolph Childress, for Jeff Goodman, for Rob Doss, for our entire crew, I'm John Fanta. Good night from the desert. Thanks for a great season.